Hi, folks. I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Heineck, physical therapist. We are the most famous physical therapists on the Internet. In our opinion, of course, Bob. Brad, we put forth and asked people for their questions that they have about their neck problems. Mm -hmm. And you responded. So today, in this video, we're going to go ahead and take a sampling of those questions and try to answer them. Right. You and want? I'm sure there's going to be a number of people who will be able to uh, benefit from the questions because right. very similar Problems Very come common, about. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay, question number one. This is from Burlap Sack. Oh. I'm assuming that's a fake name. Yeah, well kind of cute. Probably grew up on a farm. I've been having back I've been having bad pain in the back of my neck at the base of my skull when I swallow. <laughs> I also have aching pain there. The doctor uh, prescribes steroids, muscle relaxers, and PT, which he's waiting to be have scheduled. He thinks it's muscular tendon relating from posture. Due to computer, iPhone for many years, do you agree? And what exercise would you recommend? I do agree. I I would too. As a matter of fact, I would hope maybe he or she would start these exercises right. and maybe not have to take the medications if yes. you know. Uh, you so know, you so know what's what I mean. going on here? If when you're when you've got a head forward posture like this, these muscles here are becoming overactive. And they're tightening up on you, and they can give you headaches and pain. And, yeah, it can even affect your swallowing when right. you're in this position. So what we want to do, first off, if you're working at the computer a lot, I want to make sure your screen is high enough. Because if you've got a laptop and you're yeah. down like this, you're going to have that posture all day long. Right. So yeah. you need to have a separate screen. Yep. Get a, if you're going to use your laptop, I highly recommend that you get a wireless keyboard. Yes. And then raise up your laptop to a, a level so that when you're in good posture, the, key, the, the screen is about level with your eyeballs. And you're not going to achieve that unless you get a separate keyboard. Exactly. When you're using your phone, don't be going down like mm -hmm. this. Bring it up to you. It's got the little dinosaur short arms you want to have. <laughs> And hold up ty Tyrannosaurus Rex, right? And bring it up here in, as opposed to going down like this. All right. For your neck, we're going to show you one exercise, chin yeah. tucks. We've shown these a lot. You can actually, when you, when you chin tuck, you go like this. You don't go down. You don't go up. You can actually even take your hand and push it a little bit and give it a little bit of overpressure. But before you even attempt a chin tuck, Adjust your posture, yes, and posture then really you have good. to. And it's that nice to have an upright chair. You could even lean back into it and perform them that way as well. But if, if you're slouched and do a chin tuck, it will not be effective. You have to be up. The final thing we're going to say is just do some self-massage mm. to that area. So you can go ahead and do some circles with your fingertips. And you also can do what we call splain massage, where you bring your fingertips together and you pull them apart. That often works really well to help relieve the pain. Uh, what happens with this, though, is once it gets fired up sometimes, it, it's hard to calm it down. So you want to have the good posture so it doesn't fire up in the first place. Yep. All right. Good luck. Okay. Next question. Um, I wake up every day with stiffness and a headache. What should I do? Mm. This is from Mary Ann H. Marianne. Like Marianne, nice Wilkins to meet you. Wilkins Island. Marianne. Oh, Bob. Bob, yeah, why, Bob, why? Right. If you're waking up with a headache, there's two things that are possibly going on. One, it might be the position of your neck at night when you're sleeping. Right. So that's the things we're going to address. It's also possible you're doing things through the day that are irritating, and it gets so irritated it goes into the night. But we're going to assume that we can try to do something about right. this. Right. Changing your posture, as we mentioned, is you got to try the, these things, and uh, there's a probably good chance they're going to alleviate the problem. Sure. So first off, no sleeping on your stomach. If you sleep on your stomach, your head is turned all the way into one direction all night long or the other direction all night long. The neck doesn't like that, and that often causes headaches. Sure. I, I went to a course, Brad, where we kind of polled the audience. Right. And everybody who slept that way, Every one of them had headaches. It was crazy. Right. I, I was surprised that I sure. slept that way on a regular basis. The other thing, let's say you sleep on your back. You want to have the neck in always what we call neutral posture. You don't want to breathe forward like this. So if you use too many pillows sleeping on your back, look how my head is forward like this. Yeah, that's definitely 
Not good posture. Right. So I, what I want to do is, you want to pull one out, Brad? You bet. I want to be like this. Now my ears are lined up with my shoulder. My neck's all lined up. There's no extra stress on it. Uh, conversely now, let's say I sleep on my side. Here I do want to have two pillows because look what's happening. My head, heck's all bent. Kitty womp is all night long. So, <laughs> yeah. That's a good <laughs> kitty We will have no kitty womp is next. Okay. My that sound's going to get all screwed yeah, up here. Yeah. So here, again, I'm lined up all in one. The spine's all lined up in one shot. I'm going to show you one more thing here. Um, you can actually take a roll towel yep. and put it in the pillow, and it can fill in that gap where the neck is. If you're... If you're a side sleeper as well as a stomach sleeper, oh, you so find the opening there, so huh? we have this towel roll, and we're just gonna we had taped it just so that it would stay rolled. Yep, you can buy cushions that are made to put in like this, right? Um, but I, you know, the, this works. Uh, if this works well, you may want to get a cushion because they're a little more comfortable than a towel. Yeah, but this is a good start, I think. Yeah. See now here, this fills in the gap when I lay on my side. So I'm like this, if I use two pillows, it fills in that gap. But lay, if I lay on my back too, it fills in that gap. So right, it, yep. it might give you a little more support that you weren't getting, uh, and, and that's possibly causing right. your headaches. Those are the things I would start off with first and try. Right. And, and if you know you sleep mostly on one side, you know, address it as we talked about. If you are tossing and turning all, all night long, those are a little more challenging to address, but at least gives you some idea of, of good sleeping head posture. If you're turning and tossing a lot, I think it's because you're uncomfortable a lot. Quite too, well, quite that's often. a good point. Yeah. yeah, it might be a mattress issue, but oh. that's, a, that's another story. All right. <laughs> the question is, I'm a huge fan of yours, and many of your exercises help me with my back pain. I have neck hump, so mm. I want to know if it's possible to get rid of it completely. Thank you. This is from Gangina. Mm. N. I'm glad I don't have to say the last name because I had trouble with the first N name. N is in Nancy? Not in Nancy, but yes, N is in Nancy. But it's not Nancy. It's not Nancy. Okay. So anyways, neck hump, so that's like Dowager's hump? Sure. So, so what we're trying to do is get, get rid of that hump right at the base of the neck. And the best way we have found is that you apply some type of prolonged stretch to it. Although, and even before that, just... The person needs to address their posture right. on a regular basis because if you have neck hump and you have poor posture with your phone, uh, driving, computer, it's just accelerating well, it, was, it. It was caused by poor posture, the neck hump. Do you know what I mean? It, it came right. out because of it. Yeah. But this there, it could be genetic, possibly. A little bit, yeah. But I, I think. Um, by doing these things, it helps correct your posture mm -hmm. too by, by stretching. So right, right. You're going to need something. You're going to need like a tennis ball, maybe a sock if you're just starting off, a rolled up sock because it's going to be a little bit aggressive on that right. if you haven't done this before. Right. We have a video specifically on a, a sock. I can't it, remember yes. what the title is. If the sock is in the title or not. Yes, yeah, sock is in the title. But if but you Google Brad neck hump. Yeah, neck hump and sock. It'll I'll come up. It. Um, this is the uh, back pod. Um, this is pricey, but Brad and I both really like this. I mean, this is what I use every day. If you find that this helps or the tennis ball helps and it's working good, that would be a good that, purchase. That's right. I would definitely start with these. Right. So what we're going to do, Brad, if you don't mind turning around once, I'm just going to show. So what you're going to do is you're going to lie, uh, lay on this ball or you're going to put it up against the wall, one of the two. And, but you don't put it right on the spine. That's where the hump is right here. Mm -hmm. You put it on one side or the other, and you're going to work your way. You're going to put it here for maybe 30 seconds, here for 30 seconds, here for 30, 30, 30, 30. Now that, that's three minutes total, and you got the whole area there, and it's all stretched out. So, yeah, and you do this, you know, start with the sock. Yeah, start with the rolled up sock because it's going to be easier on you. Uh, we'll show this in just a minute here. Again, you could do it up against the wall. Um, ideally, if you could tolerate lying down right away, I would go ahead and lie down right away. Do not do it on a bed. It's too soft. It's yeah. not going to work. You have to go on a carpeted floor uh, unless you happen to have a firm table <laughs> or something right. you can lay on. Do you want to go ahead and do one, Brad? Sure. And, Should uh, we do uh, it on the 
Yeah, do it on here. Yeah. I mean, we, we wouldn't do it on here, but just so you could see what he's doing. Right. Yeah, it'll work out well with the color here. But, yep, so I'm, imagine I'm on the floor, carpeted floor. I'm going to lay down. And usually what I do is I kind of get to the point where I, I can feel where it is and I know where to start. I'll usually start high just between the shoulder blade and the spine and that muscle group. And you can just lay on there. You can... Go back and forth, typically up and down. You want to go right to left doesn't work so good because your shoulder blade may get pinched in there. And that's up to you if you want to just hold it. Like right now, I'm, I'm right on that muscle. It's one of those hurt so good kind of a feeling I'm getting. Or you can do a rolling. 30 seconds, and then you just kind of roll up and go up. To a different spot. But, right. Brad, I often do the bring the oh, arms good. up. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, that's a good point, yeah. Bob. Bring the arms overhead like this and yeah. stretch it that way and take deep breaths. Right, really yeah. makes a big difference. Yeah, good point, Bob. I don't know why I was. I, I must have camera shy, shyness <laughs> right now. I'm forgetting things. Um, sometimes when I'm using that, I'll, it's, that's a little higher. I only can go up and down with one side because this right. one's helping me balance a little bit. So you go up the right, si right side and then the left oh, side. Right. It's interesting, you know, I, both Brad and I, like when you first started this, you couldn't tolerate this. Sometimes you have to put a pillow on it. And right. For both of us now, when we use it, we can l lie on it without any difficulty. Exactly. It, it really, right. I really think it's made a big difference in my posture. But again, depending on how bad your back hump or neck hump is, it, it may take a while to get to that point. You right. You may have to stick with the sock for Exactly. A while. Yeah. So. You'll see this is actually designed for costochondritis, which I, I do have, so I use it for that too. But it works, the posture, the posture is yeah. the same thing. Uh, more of a curiosity question. What is happening when you make a quick, sudden movement with your neck, especially when lying down, and it feels like electrical current or vibration for a second? This is by Cynthia, and then she has two last names, or a middle name and a last name, G.S. Good. Cynthia. Cynthia. All yeah. right, Cynthia. Can we call you Cindy? No, no, it's don't, Cynthia. Don't. We're going to be. Hey, Cynthia. We better be formal. All right. So, luckily for you, this happens to me, or has happened to me in the past. <laughs> it's funny. It is a little bit scary. Like, sure. I, I remember I was a therapist when it first happened to me. And I was like, "Is something really bad going yeah, on with my neck? Because yeah. it's like a, sh it's an electrical shock." Sure. And basically, what I figured out after a while is that I'm going to lie down here, Brad. Once, when you lie down like this. And you lift your neck up, all the muscles are tightening up here, especially like you can have the sternocleidomastoids. Yep. Or where, and especially you get up and then you turn like this. I'm thinking the muscles are impinging on a nerve and giving you a sharp, sharp shock. Um, yeah. It could also be the joints itself. Mm -hmm. um, the best thing to do, because I also get it when I'm in like poor posture and I turn rapidly. I could. It has been a long time since I've gotten this, Brad, because okay. I've worked on my posture. It, it often is a posture thing. If your neck is kind of uh, in a poor posture and you turn rapidly, the joint, I don't know if it pinches on it or what, but it's, as a rule of thumb, it's not anything serious. Right. It's really just generally is posture related and also could be the muscles uh, kicking in. So right. I think, uh, you know, if it happens occasionally, if it's getting worse, right. then I would definitely see uh, go see a doctor. Um, if it just happens randomly and it's not getting worse and it seems to be with a, a certain movement, uh, that, you know, it's not too concerning. But Right. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Good luck, C Cynthia. Cynthia. Our next question is, uh, what do you recommend for whiplash uh, incurred in a recent auto accident? This is by Jean P. Jean J E A N. Oh, okay. Not Jean G G E N E. It's J E A N. Okay, so does that mean it's male or female? I think it's female. Okay. So, well, go well. Go on, Bob. I, I just wanted to clarify what what is whiplash because some people may sure. not be sure. In whiplash, generally in an automobile accident, what happens is yeah, your your head gets whipped forward and then it gets whipped back, and during that you actually tear some of the muscles. Mm -hmm. And so what we recommend is, of course, you might be wearing, they may recommend a collar for a while to allow all those muscles to start to heal. Right. But even when you're in the collar, if you can do this pain-free, um, you're going to start st gentle strengthening of the muscles. Right. So we should clarify collars so they're not thinking 
the ugliest thing, you know. Okay. A cervical brace, because some people, brace, you know, sharp. some of them are the Velcro ones, they're soft sure. and cushy. And sometimes I've had people that come in with the hard sure. plastic ones, they come in the back and the front, and, and they're much more rigid. And that's going to be up to the doctor yeah. what, what he or she feels is the most appropriate it, for you. Exactly. And what you can, you know, your comfort level is going to dictate. Right. Because a lot of times people start taking them off and they start having pain right away. Sure. So whiplash is kind of a bear to treat, to be yeah. honest with you. Mm -hmm. But the, the only thing I've seen that it helps in the research that I saw was isometric strengthening. And that means strengthening without movement mm -hmm. of the neck. So... Let's say you want to strengthen the muscles in the front here. You're going to take your hand and put it against your forehead, and I'm going to hold, and I'm going to push against it. Like 8 to 12 seconds, you're thinking, Brad? Right, right. So if the hand wasn't there, my head would go right forward like this. So 8 to 12 seconds, push. And, I'll, and you can just do repeats. And if it starts to hurt, back off. Right. If it so. creates pain in the neck, you don't do it. You should just feel the muscles working. Um, Probably work up to 10 repetitions. Right, right. I don't yeah. think you have to do any more than that, especially right. with isometrics. I, might, I would just start out with five because, you know, sure. if you're holding 10 seconds, that, that's quite that's a long a, time. Quite a long time. So you go, go through the directions? Yeah, uh, we're going to go side bending. So if I wasn't there, I'd be going to the side like this. One, two, three, four, five. What, did we decide hold for five seconds or eight to ten seconds? Well, eight to ten, but yeah. it's just one of those five, things that seven, it's eight. just not on and off, and you're yeah. not going to hold it for thirty. It's you, you'll you'll feel when you fatigue. You'll do the other side too, so it'll be like this. You can do rotations, so you can actually put your hand on your jawline and stop your neck from turning. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So, both directions. Yeah, both directions. Now, I'm going to say that you might find that maybe forward and, and or you know, the backwards, maybe three or four of the directions is no pain, but there's a couple directions where it produces pain. Avoid those yes, less. And, and as it improves over you know, a few days or a week or whatever. Go, go back and reassess the ones that are painful, and that sh they should be improving with time, and then you can do them when they're not painful. So forward back, side, side, rotate right, rotate left. Right. That's, that's the ones you want to do. You can do it up, you know, a couple times a day even if you want to because these are postural muscles and, right. and you're not doing overly strengthening them when you're doing the isometric like that. Right. So, so again, yeah, uh, give it a try. pain-free and, and uh, good luck with it, please. All right, the question is how to tell muscular pain from structural issues and this had a lot of people's interest, by the way. A lot of people want to know the answers. Sure. Uh, this question was posed by Wendy A. Hello, oh. Wendy. Wendy, good question. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are curious about this. And as therapists, uh, you know, we like to know too. But we'll tell you about it. It's, it's always not as important as you may think uh, to, to make to it better. To answer, right. Right. But, and that will become clear as we talk about it. I, I would say one thing overall, which you can pretty much be assured, like if the pain is changing, like if I turn one way and I feel the pain here, then I turn another way and the pain is over here, mm -hmm. it, it's probably not muscular then because muscle, it's going to hurt in one muscle. It's going to continue to hurt one muscle. Um, I think like whiplash, you know, you, you tore a certain muscles. Right. Uh, you probably tore ligaments, too, and they're going to consistently hurt. But when it's changing, it's probably structural. And, so. and also, neurologic. you know, it could be a nerve pinch. Neurological. Which is another component that, you know, she didn't ask, but, you know, as a therapist, we're always looking at muscle, nerve, uh, bony. Joint. Uh, joint. Um, so there's a, a lot of things in there. But Bob was mentioning as things move, and that's pretty common that, the pain will start here in the neck, but you know sometimes it may radiate into the shoulder or down into the arm. And we just did a video on you know if that happens, it's probably a nerve being pinched. So that's another whole dimension uh, of the I would conversation. I say as a rule of thumb, we generally lean towards that it's a structural problem. Right. And what we do, and Brad, you just mentioned this, and I thought it was a really good point, is that we really base it upon what can we do to reduce the symptom, symptoms? Right. It really doesn't matter what the issue is, what is going to work to reduce the symptoms. And that's generally, generally start with posture, mm -hmm. and then we usually start with some type of directional exercise. Usually some exercise helps decrease the pain, 
another exercise might increase it. So we want to find out which one decreases it. Right. So in other words, this is really might be simplifying it a little bit, Bob. Let's say you know you have neck pain and, and you rotate to the right, and it doesn't bother you. But if you rotate to the left and you get just a little over there, all of a sudden, oh, that hurts. So we're not going to tell you to push into that painful area because you're just going to irritate it. We're going to go in the pain-free range 10 times, for example, and then go back to the left and see if we can go a little bit farther. Maybe not the first day, but with time and repetition, you want to keep things moving, get things loosened up, and allow the healing process, and then stretch that painful side as long as it's not irritating it. Yeah, now if there's tightness one direction and it doesn't really hurt, it's just tight, then by all means, right. work that direction all right. you want. Mm -hmm. But we never want to increase the pain or aggravate the pain. Right. So um, if you want specifics on that, you're going to have to go to our video uh, if you have a specific problem. But I, I, she was just a general question, so we gave a yeah. general answer. Very, yeah, it, it is a hard one to, to answer black and, black and white. There's yeah. a lot of variables. Thank you, Wendy. Good question. Thanks. All right, the question is, I have arthritis in my neck, C5 to C7. I find that when I do stretches, it gets irritated. Should I stretch anyway to be able to keep my range of motion? Uh, stretches and exercise can easily trigger or even increase my pain. Any ideas on a good therapeutic balance? Um, this is by Patty G.W. Mm. I thought, yeah, Patty. Patty. P-A-T-T-I. I, okay. Yeah, All like, right, Patty, good, good uh, question. Yeah, good question. Mm -hmm. So... Brad and I, funny, we were just kind of a discussion on this. One th rule of thumb is that if there is a direction that irritates it, try just doing the, the, the direction that doesn't irritate sure. it. Sure. Maybe there's not a direction that doesn't irritate it for you. I don't know. And then we have an option for that, we too. We have an option for that, too. The other thing is you've got to be in really good posture when you're doing your range of motion. Good point, Bob. You don't want to be like this and then working on turning. Right. And going like this, Brad's yeah. going to show you from the side. So, yeah, get a nice, firm, upright chair so that it offers and promotes po good posture versus sitting on something like this where there's no back. You know, so I'm, I'm not going to do the exercises here. I'm going to start out like this. Um, and depending on your situation, of course, we're going to try to get into here. Maybe it hurts even more. probably start with chin tucks. You want to show chin tucks? Yeah. So that's usually one that does not irritate things. Um, and you're not going down or up. You're going just back, and that warms it up a little bit. Get the neck warmed up. Yep. Um, by the way, you could put some heat on your neck before you do this. Too. Sure. Yep. And then you're going to work on uh, rotations, like we said. And if it hurts in one direction, don't do it that direction. Just work on the non-painful direction. Right. Um, we're going to have you work on extensions. This is often one that is a little bit painful on the people, and this is where – we're going to give you the, the biggest hint of this all. Oh, right. Use a towel. A towel. <laughs> towel. Not a towel. A, a towel. So give it got, a try. This is a towel rolled up. We have some red tape on here, so it maintains its uh, nice rolled shape. So I like to have my patients relax into an upright chair with good posture. And, you know, if you do this and it hurts, pretty common. So if you take a towel roll and you put it here, usually a, a thick cushion one works good for this particularly if it's painful, and then relax and breathe, and then just to support, you don't have to pull hard, will allow you to go farther. Just go until you start to feel the pain. Don't push into the pain right. by any means. Don't get irritated. Yeah, just go back, and you'll, find, you'll, you'll probably be amazed that if you gently stretch into it 10 times, give it a break, see how it feels, and if it doesn't get inflamed or sore from that, you know, in a few hours, you can try that again. And within a few days, you may be amazed at how much better your range of motion is if you go appro approach it real cautiously, use the towel roll. Uh, do, Bob, are we going to show the rotations? Yeah, do you want to show the rotations, or should I show with this sheet here? I can do, do well, we, either. Well, we can do it both. Yeah, we can do Profile both. and, uh, and so straight on. This is probably a little bit too much of a sheet here, but what you're going to do is you're going to use that same towel, and if I'm going to go to the right, I'm going to actually, I, I like to switch hands. So do I. So I switch hands like this, and now it's easily to pull it across like this. And you try to keep your shoulders back, and you're just going to, it gives you some nice support while you're doing these gentle rotations. So again, another way to do it. Then you just switch the other way. We're going to hit our mics on this one. Yep. 
but you switch your hands and pull across like that. It's amazing what the towel around the neck like this, uh, you know, patients will say, boy, that, that really does feel better. You can go a little farther with less pain, uh, and it works like out well. It's like a hug around your neck. It is. Yeah, very nice. All right, I hope that helps. Good luck.